daisies with us this morning. So we'd like to welcome them here today. And do you want to say anything or do you just want to do your song for us? Are we all here? We are now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, here we are. Well, I'll give you a minute to No, we don't need a minute. Do hello song first, okay? Oh, you want to do the hello song first? Is that okay? And then oh, we'll, sure. have, we'll hear Whatever. from you. Where are we going? Okay. Yes. So. Well, we were just thinking we could do your song at the end of the children's chat. Is that okay? So that's a little bit later on. Will that work for you guys? Okay, cool. All right, so we're going to do our welcome song. Hello, everybody. Welcome to St. John's. <laughs> today. <coughs> Last week we had a whole bunch. No birthdays this week? Anybody have a birthday? No, no birthdays? No birthdays? Okay. So the girls have one coming up, but that's in another week or two. Anybody else? Any anniversaries to celebrate? No anniversaries either? <laughs> Boy, I look forward to this every week. <laughs> okay, so um, announcements, I guess. Oh, Stephen is here, but Maureen's here. All right, so good morning, everybody. Good morning. Are there any announcements from the congregation? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, all right. We'll start with uh, Bill. We'll get you next. Dave. Yeah, quick, quickly. Uh, food for Friends is this Wednesday. Uh, so if you're baking brownies, please pick up a brownie mix uh, at the church. All right. Uh, Thank you. And once again, I'm going to remind you to uh, take the Christmas flowers off the trees so that we can uh, make room for new people. All right, cool. Thank you for that reminder. All right. So wanted to, uh, first off to welcome... Daisy Girl Scout Troop number 27 for joining us today. We're glad you're all here today. Uh, all right. um, also, a reminder for our Wednesday Lenten services, the Holden Evening Prayer Service is going to be at St. John's Ridge Valley this week at um, 7 o'clock. And they're having a soup supper before at 6 if you want to join them for that as well. Um, then next week... Next, or yeah, for next week's, for next Wednesday's service on the 20th, the Holden Evening Wednesday service is here at St. John's, and we're actually doing a soup supper as well, and that'll start at 6 o'clock, so come on out for that soup supper and a good uh, Holden Evening service. It's a good, good time to reflect as we come to the end of Lent. And... A quick reminder, Pub Theology is March 21st, that's a Thursday, at the Spinnerstown Hotel. We're meeting at 6.30. If anybody's interested, please let me or Stephen Spry know so that we have all of the numbers together so we can make the right size reservation. And lastly, the Willing Workers are sponsoring an Easter egg hunt on the 24th after worship. So... Um, if you have any questions about that or you want to join with that, and please feel free to talk to Peggy no, talk about that. Just, uh, you know, the join in with the fun. Right after the service. Right after the service. <coughs> Thank you for that reminder. All right. Are there any other announcements for the good of the congregation? No? All right. I guess we turn over to the daisies and the brownies. Oh, to you. Okay. <laughs> turn over to Kathy. <laughs> Good morning, church. Good morning. I am glad everybody woke up because it's hard. We lose an hour's sleep and, and you don't look too bleary eyed. So I'm glad you were all here. Right now, I want to invite all the kids to come up because we're going to have a little chat, okay? You guys can just sit around here, okay? Whoa. Somebody might have to come on. Sit all the way up here just so you can hear me. If I have to stand up, I will. I might need some help, so I might need an able-bodied 
Brown, you can help me in a little bit. <laughs> wow, was it hard getting up this morning? Huh? Was it? A little bit? It's hard for me. I woke up early in the, oh, daylight savings is, but it's nice. You know why it's nice at the end of the day? What happens? Do you know? What happens at the end of the day? Stella, do you know? What happens? You get what? You no, you don't get to sleep. I think you get to play longer. Stella lives next to me, so. I know, she just told me I was like, whoa. She's yeah, so I know. She will be in the park, right? So uh, anyway, well, that's a good thing. And today, we're going to talk about light and dark. So it's pretty kind of cool that it's daylight savings. I'm going to ask you a question. What do you do if... You go in your bedroom and you know you left something under your bed and it's dark and you can't find it. Or if you go in your closet and you don't turn on the light and it's dark in there, what do you do? What do you, what do, you do to help you see? Turn on some lights. Turn on some lights? What else? What else makes light when it's dark? Yeah. Candle or a flashlight, right, right. So we have light that we can to see when it's dark. And this morning we're going to talk about Jesus coming into the world, and He's the light. And when you hear the gospel reading this morning, you're going to hear a really famous verse in there, and it talks about God loving us so much that He sent Jesus to us. And that sometimes when things get dark and scary and maybe sad, we worry. But the important thing to remember is that Jesus is always with us. Even when we're dark and sad and lonely, Jesus is there. And he's there when the sun is shining bright like it is today. And so... I just want to see if you guys can help me with a little experiment. Who wants to help? <laughs> okay, I can use two helpers. Okay, Sally, you want to come over? How about you? You want to come over? Because I have two things to do. Okay, so I need a flashlight holder. All right, okay, you just hold it for right now. Now, I'm going to hold <laughs> this up. I can get it apart. I'm going to hold this up. What is that? Who can tell me what that is? A um, uh, half of a heart. A half of a heart. You want to come back behind me? Come back behind me. I want you to do something. Okay. Now, when I hold this up, you shine the flashlight right on it. Can you have it turn on? It's right on here. There you go. What do you see now? Is it still a half a heart? No. no. It's a whole heart, isn't it? Okay. Now, step. You want to switch? You want to grab the flashlight? Because you did it Turn lightly. It yeah, I did. Yeah. And that's a secret. It's almost like magic. Okay. Now, who can read? What does that say? Yeah. What do you see? What is that? Almost? Yeah. Okay, Stella, you want to shine the flashlight? Now what does it say? Can you people see that? Can you see what it says? Love. Love. And you know why I did that? Okay. It's because Jesus wants us to shine our lights for everybody to see. And so Jesus shines through us. And here, when we get baptized, we hand a candle to the mommies and daddies, and everybody in the congregation says, let your light so shine before others so that they can see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And that just means we're supposed to shine, even when you're tiny little babies. Can you, can you tell me any way you might be able to show God's love to somebody? To let your light shine? How about if you give somebody a hug? Yeah? How about if you help mommy and daddy without being asked? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What else? 
else? How else can you show love? <coughs> How about when you sing? Yeah. Yeah, when you sing here, you're showing everybody love. Yeah. You forgot. Okay. All right. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about being the light for other people so that when they're sad or they're lonely or when even when they're happy, that we can be Jesus' light shining in the world. Okay? So let's do a quick prayer, and then you guys are going to sing. Okay? Good and gracious God, we just thank you so much for bringing us here today for giving us a beautiful sunshine outside to remind us how much you love us and how much you want us to be light for the world. In your name, amen. Amen. Now you guys can go sit down and you guys, I think, are going to sing, right? <laughs> So these girls, thank you for having us, first of all. Thank you so much. This is my daughter, Aria. She's a daisy. And then we also have here um, Taylor, Stella, Gabby, and Ellie. And they are five of the 18 girls who are in our Daisy and Brownie troop. So thank you so much for having us and for hosting us here every week, and especially for World Thinking Day, which we held. When was that? <coughs> Gosh, time goes so fast. This, uh, that last week or the week before? Yeah, yeah. And we had about 75 Girl Scouts from the Richmond Service Unit here in the church learning about the issues that affect our world and girls around the world. So, um, for participating in Girl Scout Sunday, the girls are in their My Promise, My Faith pen. And we talked about our different faith traditions, and we picked a line of the Girl Scout law. They each picked their own line of the Girl Scout law that um, they could then connect to either verse or song or scripture in their own faith tradition. And then on the front of these sheets, they also picked out three quotes that connected to that line of the law. Um, and then we also picked a song that we thought would be nice to sing for you today. So are you ready, girls? Okay, one, two, three. The golden sun sinks in the west. Great spirit calls Girl Scouts to rest. We've had our work, we've had our play, and we have lived the true scout way. Each day we've done some new good turn, someone to help. No praise to earn, we've been prepared for all in view, and now we pledge our promise true. Upon my honor I will try to do my duty, God on high, and help all other people out, and live the life of true Girl Scouts. Thank you for having me.
Good morning again uh, for being here. And now I would like to invite you to please stand as you are able for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow in hatred. For all these things and for sins only you know. Forgive us, Lord. Amen. Here is the flood of grace out of love for the whole world. God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrong, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Moses. 
Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness, where there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food? Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking out against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The congregation will read the bold print. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. For God's mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that God redeemed them from the hand of the foe. Gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south, some of the fools took the rebellious paths, through their sins they were afflicted. They loathed all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord, and you delivered them from their distress. You sent forth your word and healed them, and rescued them from the grave. Let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wonderful works for all people. Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving, and tell of your deeds with shouts of joy. The second reading is a reading from the book of Ephesians. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your, by your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Christ. 
Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is the first day of Daylight Savings. And again, I thank you for waking up and, and coming to worship this morning. I don't know about you, but even though I did lose an hour of sleep, I really like the fact that we spring forward because even though it's dark in the morning yet, it stays light longer at the end of the day. And light seems to bring out the best in us since as humans we're not nocturnal and our eyes really don't adjust too well in the dark, do they? We bang into stuff, we can't see clearly where we're going. And we don't particularly like not being able to focus what is ahead of us in the dark. Also, we know all too well shenanigans happen in the dark. And then, wow, Lent seems to be moving rather quickly, don't you think? And we are now in week four already. And our gospel readings are moving from Mark to John and our reading today from John 3, beginning at verse 14, contains within it the verses of the very famous verse that begins, For God so loved the world, Keep going! <laughs> Right, right. That is a verse that I imagine most of us knew. And as soon as I started saying it, even in your head, you were already moving right along with me. We learned this verse as children, and some of us even have it displayed in artwork and cross-stitch pillows on our couches. And we see it at placards, at sporting events. Don't know why, but they hold up placards. It's on T-shirts, and sometimes we see it in billboards along the highway. In Christianity, this verse has become synonymous with the gospel. And that's not wrong. This verse is part of the larger story of the gospel, and it helps us to understand the true nature of Jesus. However, I worry sometimes that we've quoted this verse so much that we've oversimplified it, and we've watered down its meaning, and we forget the rest of the story. The focus of today's text is verses 14 to 21, but I want to encourage you to go back to verse 1 of John chapter 3. It's the story of Nicodemus, and I think it helps you to put the whole message into context. We're all pretty familiar with this story. It's Nicodemus, a Pharisee, an accomplished religious elite, a leader of the Jews, and he comes to Jesus by night. I think the idea of coming by night is important to the story. Nicodemus was trying to hide the fact that he was curious about Jesus. The two had a conversation about how you had to be born again, and it leaves Nicodemus confused and perhaps even more curious. The verses we have today are the continuation of that conversation with Jesus and Nicodemus. Verse 14, where we begin, is a reference to the Old Testament. In fact, it was our first reading this morning from Numbers 21, verses 4 to 9. In that story, God has sent serpents into the wilderness, and these serpents are biting and killing the Israelites as punishment because of their complaining against God. After doing so, the gospel tells us Moses, God tells Moses to fashion a serpent out of bronze and place it on a stick and hold it up. Anyone who was bitten by one of the poisonous snakes can look up at the serpent Moses is holding and be healed. Jesus, in our story today, is equating himself to the serpent that Moses lifted up. And, lifting, and the lifting up part is also referring both to Jesus being lifted up on the cross, but also as God is lifting up Christ for us to look at and believe in and trust in. 
and be healed. Jesus goes on to say that God loved the world so much that if we believe in him, we will have eternal life. Unfortunately, many have come to understand this verse, John 3.16, as telling us that belief in God is simply an intellectual exercise. But that's not really what is meant by the word that we often translate believe if we look at the whole of John's gospel and what John is trying to teach us in this gospel. A better word that might help us today would be if we replace the word believe with trust. That if we trust in Jesus, we will be saved. To believe is something, is a simple exercise we do with our head, but to trust something is to do it with our whole lives. To believe that Jesus died and was raised to save us is easy to understand in the sense that it requires nothing of us. But such simplicity does not honor the larger story John is telling. This is a story about an encounter with Jesus that left an intelligent, accomplished man scratching his head in bewilderment as he went back into the dark. This is a story about how any one of us might reject the light offered to us because of the way it exposes the dark in us. To believe this good news in a way that brings salvation requires more than believing that. It requires trusting in. To trust in Jesus is not simply to believe something about what happened long ago, but also to let our lives be transformed by the Jesus we encounter in the story. Remember, Nicodemus came to Jesus under the cover of darkness and Jesus is offering him an invitation to come out into the light and to be free from fear and uncertainty that keeps him in the dark. As followers of Christ, we too are invited to trust Jesus so much that we can live the whole of our lives in the light of and the light by Christ. Walking into the light helps us to be able to adjust our eyesight, refocus, stop stumbling, and see the world as Jesus sees it. Trusting in Jesus, as John describes, is no easy thing, and trusting in Jesus sometimes will make us unpopular. <coughs> Placing our trust in this Jesus means withholding our ultimate loyalty and trust from other things that ask us to pledge our allegiance. Trusting in Jesus means we must be honest with ourselves about the subtle ways we are complicit in and benefit from the status quo. Trusting in Jesus means speaking out against injustice and working to alleviate it. And finally, trusting in Jesus means we may have to go to places God calls us that might make us uncomfortable and frightened. Trusting in Jesus is and cannot be just an intellectual exercise, but a physical, life-transforming exercise, reorienting our whole world, our vision, and even our whole life around an entirely new perspective and way of being. Trusting in Jesus means wholly trusting in the promise that Jesus Christ is the light of the world and that this light will lead us to an abundant life in this world and life eternal. In the name of the light that the darkness cannot overcome, amen.
Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Pray for the church, the well being of creation, and a world in need. Gracious God, your love unites. Give vision to the global church and foster cooperation and mission. Increase interreligious understanding and ecumenical dialogue. Make your church a sanctuary for all fleeing persecution, disaster, and war. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, your love enlivens. Restore balance to the earth's fragile habitats. Preserve wilderness lands, rainforests, and wildlife. Cleanse oceans and rivers. Make us good stewards of the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Righteous God, your love liberates. We give thanks for those who courageously witness <clears throat> excuse me, to your liberating love, especially Harriet Tubman, and sojourner truth, renewers of society, whom we commemorate today. Free all people from the evils of racism, religious strife, and hatred. Comfort and strengthen all women and children who have suffered from the human rights violations of war throughout the world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Merciful God, your love heals. Care tenderly for all whose loved ones perish from the pandemic disease in every nation. Strengthen health care workers, first responders, and caregivers. Relieve all who live with chronic illness and pain, especially Olivia, Olivia Borer, Dorothy Brinkman, Lily May Funk, Renee Georgiatis, Arlene Henry, Rich Hines, Richard Krauss, Sarah Landis, Wayne McConaughey, the family and friends of Alan Stone, Doris <coughs> Weaver, Raymond Wolf. For peace in the Middle East and Ukraine, victims of natural disasters, victims of gun violence, and everyone throughout the world in harm's way. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. <clears throat> Incarnate God, your love enlightens. Open our hearts and minds to fresh understandings of our faith. Deepen our love for you and for one another. Teach us to pray for our enemies. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, our guide, inspire our council, transition team, and all congregational leaders as we continue through this time of transition at St. John's. Open the eyes of all to recognize the presence of your Holy Spirit among us. May your presence comfort us now and always. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. <laughs> Abide in God, your love saves. Those who died in the faith are made alive in Christ. We give thanks for your promise that we also will be raised to newness of life. Hear us, O God. <laughs> Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also Let us share with one another a sign of God's peace. <laughs>